size of this gaff. <laughs> Imagine if he just tells us to fuck off. Have you seen his van? You, Look at his van. Okay. Yeah. Cheers, pal. See you in a minute. Bye. Ricky Wilson, you better hurry up or he's going to knock you out. Look at what terrace is it? I'm not going to invite him to my modest mid, mid terrace Victorian. Ricky's. <laughs> there he is. Remove that piece of shit. <laughs> 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 what, that one? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's. Hey, well, good, good to see you, Paul. Good to see you, mate. Good. Yeah, great. Thanks for doing this. Oh, looking forward to it, mate. You all right, Paul? Look at this fucking thing. I love that. That is great. Hey, if you're going to bump the camper, man, do it into that. Look at it. Oh, yeah, I said Bentley. It's a roller, isn't it? Lovely. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, Paul, if you have that. Oh, I've had it, Paul. 20 years, that now, to be that honest. That is fun. I, I used to drive around in it all the, all the time. Now it's about 55 years old, it's a death trap. Yeah. But um, yeah. I used to drive around a bit, and I prefer to use like a blow up nose in the back. I used oh, to yeah. Shit yeah. Oh, Brilliant. Brilliant. I bet everyone loved that. So you just leave it for bad no, I mean, I, I've no doubt it probably could do if I got the jump leads on and started it up and got it going, but. Um, it's, it's fiberglass, isn't it? You, know, you ever flipped it on its side? Yeah, you go around the corner, you, it, it'll shatter. It's fiberglass, isn't it? Fucking <laughs> hey, great gaff, mate. Fuck me. We were going, which one? Which, which one is it? Which one is it? We went, oh, there is the heartbreak. And then we saw a city. A city, yeah, we didn't even see it. We saw a city flag, then we looked up and went, whoa! All right, show's down there, son. Take your shoes off your scruffs. OK, OK. <laughs> Listen, by the way, if you need anyone to build you a shed, Will's got a guy that knows. He loves, he's, got, he's very proud of his shed. Look at this gap, mate. What are you up this for? <laughs> right, I was born at Hattersley Council Estate, which is, ironically, it's only about eight minutes drive down the road, so I've never moved. I've got the house I always wanted. Oh, mate. I never moved, uh, I never moved further than me all I've never moved out of a 10 mile radius since the day I was born. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Mate. You're only, you're only the one. When they go and do things, then they go, this is where the magic happens, it's normally in the bedroom. <laughs> They're making fat and it's the fucking kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the magic happens. To be honest, for me, it's the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> this is great, man. Ricky, oh, this is now. outrageous. I've been here now about 14 years. And, uh, and you, you had it all built? I had it all built, but pretty much from, pretty much from scratch. I just kept the front of the building, because that was quite smart. But. Uh, Oh, this was like a uh, wow. marsh at the back. Have you see the field on the yeah, yeah, yeah. You can imagine all the rain, when the rain is raining, all the water running down from there. It was like a marsh in here, so we've had it all drains put in and, you know, and uh, everything like that. And it's, it's all about an acre, just under an acre, which is... Uh, when I saw it, I thought, oh, what's not happening this? I said to my old man, when it's not happening this, Dad, look at the state of it. He went, oh, think bigger picture, cut it, put, cut yeah, it back and everything yeah. like that. And it's, wow. it makes me feel... Um, and you, are you so really... proud when the kids come and play? Of course, yeah, I, I bet, know yeah, that. I, you gotta just, I know you come from a working class council estate background. You, you must wake up in the morning and go, fucking hell, yeah. all right. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I look at my, my, my boat race and I think, was it, was it really worth it? <laughs> and then sometimes. <laughs> so do I, never to be fair. Sometimes when I come to my house and I see the kids playing and Campbell will bring Lila around and Million Fern will come and Lila and Jack, my, my brother Matthew's kids, and they're all jumping, you know, they're just dead down here. Oh, was it all worth it? It's been living room. Very rarely used that. Yeah. To be honest, I spend a high majority of my time just in here. Come in the front yeah. of the gym, chuck me back in the corner, and just pop my ass on the couch. And Always the way, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's come through. Look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, just oh, oh. oh it's lovely so it's, here. So it's... <laughs> Oh, this is wicked! Oh, freezer outside. You, 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 must, you must spend a bit of time in here, though, even just on your jacks mainly, hanging out. Mainly, mainly, the, mainly the, the kids, when the kids come out. But, I mean, sometimes if there's my gym, I do a little bit of a workout myself uh, every now and again. <laughs> and then sometimes I'll just 
because the heat from the swimming pool, when I do my running, my running machine, I, oh, the sweat's absolutely pissing out of me. And what I do is just strip off and just dive in the pool and it's yeah, nice imagine. and I go with me. Need me a uh, jacuzzi there and... Well, football team do support. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Shit, yeah. yeah. You shit okay. out. Have you got a box at City? I did. I used to have one years ago. You know, but... Uh... I see the clip where you, on the show where they said, I mean, is it true you've got a box? And he said, yeah, and if it was a good bomb, my dad let me yeah, stand on it. Fuck it, this is unbelievable, Rick. Yeah, it's the... Uh... Okay. Hey, hey. Somebody was in <laughs> shape. Look at this! Hold on, you've got a photo like that from Attitude magazine. Hey, you know, you know what? This this may shock you, but that was only last week. Are you gonna say that was an eight hours glove? Sixteen hours. Look at that! Sixteen hours glove. Look at that. Look at that. All the gloves are boxing. You know, the actual gloves are beat more than I do. Your angle, uh, the scoundrel, the box that. Uh, I was there for that fight in Vegas with you. We yeah, were there. Well, yeah, but Tanya, you didn't miss a one, to be honest. No, you was... and the old, the old man, the rest of his soul. Yeah, lovely. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks to you, me and my dad got to. He lived his dream coming out to Vegas, but not only to come out to Vegas to see a fight, to come and see you fight in Vegas. I was saying before coming to Vegas to watch you fight, it, you, you go out on the street, it was like being in the middle of Manchester. Everywhere you look, like, hey, I like, hey, it's like you took more people there than anyone's ever took oh. anywhere. And it's like when I think um, your heroes, who are still your heroes, you know, like Frank Bruno and Nigel Benn, who, who went over there, and you, they're, they're my heroes, still my heroes mm -hmm. to, this, to this day. And you think they went over and they took like 10 and 12, and, and yeah. I went over and took 30 and 40. Mm -hmm. it, it's 40,000 like, people to it, Vegas. You think, you know, it's, you have to look at these pictures to think, did I, did I do that? Did that actually happen? Unbelievable. It was, it was something else. Well, you know what? I mean, we'll talk about this, but I'm, I'm looking at those pictures. I'm like, we'll, we'll sit down and have a proper chat, but like, uh, I, mean, I, mean, I mean this in like the best possible way. It just seems so, looking at you there, it seems bizarre to think I'm talking to like just the same guy, just a normal bloke from, from around the corner. Yeah. You've done all these extraordinary yeah. things. It just seems like a different world. It seems hardly possible. Yeah, well, Do you think that when you're looking at this stuff? I, I, I mean, I, I've never... I think people supported me. I think, one, I had an exciting style, which people, people, you know, liked, because I was dead aggressive. Yeah. I was a body puncher. But I don't think... If it was just that, I don't think I'd have had half the fan base. I think people support me, because you, what you see is what you got. There's no airs and graces. I've never, like I said earlier to you, I've never moved further than out of a 10 mile radius. I still have the same mates I went to, to, to school with. And um, you can't so. kid the fans, can you? No. They, they can see that I'm just I'm one, <coughs> one of them, their own, one yeah. Of them and, yeah, yeah. and it's not, it's not, I mean, you know. That's the people that came out to see you, that's what I'm saying. They're working, they were working class people, they spent their hard earned money to follow you wherever you went. And, and you know, the first person. They'd see you and have a baby in the yeah. pub the next week after. Well, I'll tell you what, whenever, whenever I go whenever in Manchester, because everyone's used to seeing me in Manchester, but I say I do because I do after dinner speaking and motivational speaking now, which we'll, we'll get to in a bit, but um, it's not a week going by where if I walk somewhere like Liverpool or I went to Southampton for the weekend to watch City against versus Southampton, and you won't believe I must get every week at least three or four people say to me, I went to Vegas to watch you fight. Oh, oh yeah, the yeah. best, best times ever, still to this day. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I was there one Did well him. against City, didn't they, Southampton, by the way? Or do we not mention no, that? No, 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 no. I think they deserved it. I think, I think, I think deserved it. <laughs> Listen, we can't say fuck. Yeah, I know, I'm a bit nervous. I don't want to annoy him. No, no, I don't want to annoy him. Mind the gap. <laughs> Look, is this that, Ricky, is this what you wore when you came in? That time? When you yeah. had the fat suit on? I thought, uh, I steal that Manchester Mexican. Were you spun him around with the body shot? I was at yeah, the Thomas yeah, and Mike yeah. Centre. That's right. Yeah. Um, I mean, you came in. Is that what you had the fat suit on, the Ricky Fatton? The fat suit on. Now, that, that was for the Castillo one. The Castillo one. I wore that actually for the, um, the Lascano fight. I wore the fat suit for the Lascano fight. Because Come I got on, Will, beat, put it on. I got beat by Mayweather. I don't think it'll fit. And I um, <laughs> felt like wrapping the game in. Really? And then they, um, they put a picture of me in the paper. Look at him. Look at the size of him. Look how fucking fat he is. He's never going to get that weight off in time. And he was like, headlines with Ricky Fatton. And I've never fell out with the press. I've always gotten well with the press, but I thought to myself, you know, I come out in a fat suit and that was my way going to the yeah. press. Just, exactly. Just, you, know, you took it off and you yeah, fucking looked yeah. like that. It's fucking fat now. Fantastic. Yeah. Mate, right. Where's your bar? 
Let's have a look. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get to the fucking house. It's a business. I've got everything else, but I've not got a bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. As if Ricky wouldn't have a fucking bar. Should have brought us some in trunks, to be fair. Look at this. Big man's bar. Big man's bar. Oh, nice. <laughs> wow. This is a bar. Yeah. Tony oh. Bells. Oh, me. Look at this. British title. Me WBA, Mike Walter, Walter Waite, IBF, Mike Walters. IBLW like Walters. What, what, what's this new one? No, I'm serious. Sabuti old champion, 80, 1986. That must have been my first trophy when I was 11. Look at the size of that. That's the reason I asked, because I, what I'm loving about this is that you've still got your first trophy from yeah. when you were 11. That, that would have played with your world title. When I won the schoolboy football final for Attersley Youth, I think it was, which uh, was my council state where I was born. All the little trophies. That was my first amateur fight, that trophy. My very first wow, amateur wow. fight. I'm sorry, man, but this is just, honest to God. That made me MBE. The Lonsdale belt is just one of the most beautiful belts. You have to defend this three times to be able to keep it. Yeah. It's just, I mean, I think that's one of the best looking belts. I mean, I absolutely well, love it. Obviously, the dream is from day one to be a world champion, but before I, and I think any, any fighter or any world champion, or any former world champion would say, before they went on to do that, they wanted that one. Yeah. Without a doubt. What is, what is, what is your favourite belt or, was it, I mean, I know you said the Lonsdale belt, but the WBC? Well, the WBC is always regarded, uh, I didn't win the WBC world title, I won the WBC Intercontinental title when I beat, um, I think I beat Castile for that one, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Yeah. But the IBF belt was when I beat Kostya Zou for the undisputed um, yeah. title. I mean, he was universally recognised as undisputed, he vacated the other two, but he did win all three against Sab Judah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that one was, that one was my best win. And. Uh, that one was the one when they, they said, you know, he'd go down in British boxing as one of the greatest ever wins, and that's why, so that's that's got to be me, me best power. It's not just because it's the IBF, it's because of the fellow I fought to win it, you know what I mean? It was, yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Well, if it was a favourite room in the house, <laughs> <laughs> this is it. This with is me, it. With, with my belts, ev all my memorabilia, and everyone's got a story which... Uh, Sure, we're going to talk oh, about a little please, bit yeah, over here. Wow, There's a pint for you, you which... Love it. Thank you. Cheers, which, uh, Cheers Rick. I think you're, you're shocked, I reckon, I had a bit of a bar in here. <laughs> <laughs> Never, Never in a month of Sundays, no. Yeah. <laughs> the pool's more of a surprise, to be honest. Can't believe the Aldi's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is Cheers, Cheers, Rick. Pleasure, thanks. Good to see you, boys. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I've got some... I've got some... <laughs> Why is he gone? He's only had one mouthful. I know, do you know what I mean? He's, he's got the fucking spew in the toilet, hasn't he? There we go! Oh, that's the stool from the Mayweather fight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it looks like a pub. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's pretty great. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> I have to prop my ice machine up. You used to prop me up, now it's prop the ice machine up. Well, mate, uh, first wow. of all, man, Brilliant. thanks so much for having thanks. us. Thanks, yeah, welcome. In your house, in your bar. Thanks for being so welcoming. Where did it all go wrong, Rick? <laughs> Fucking hell. Round two against Pacquiao. No, but uh, good times over the years, mate. And um, to be fair, you were there, Will Frogan, with your old man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you guess something like that. Real, real good times, you know, just to just to, to go over there and, you know, get the job done and then celebrate after, and, you know, in, in, in Las, Las Vegas. Yeah. I was born in Antisley. Well, well that's Las what Vegas. I wanted to say. That's what I'm saying, because I grew up around here. I grew up in Bredbury and Stockport and all that. And you, and you grew and I boxed when I was a kid in uh, Bredbury and I boxed at high. My uncle, my uncle boxed for England, my dad boxed. And so I was always fanatical about boxing, obviously never got anywhere with it, but as like you did. But how did it all start for you? Was it as a kid, school, did you get into trouble fighting or was it? I wasn't, to be honest with you. No, I was, uh, I was always good at school. I never used to do fuck all right, but I was, <laughs> I was, I was never no trouble. And, um, but no, I, I used, when I first started off, I used to be into Bruce Lee films. I used to love Bruce Lee films when I was about seven, eight. <laughs> And I said, uh, I want to go kickboxing. So I went to an old cool kickboxing uh, gym on Hattersley. Did all right there. And I've always been a little short, stumpy, stumpy type, on it? So, you know, you can imagine the size of my legs. I wasn't really good at the kicking. You could see there was a talent with my fists. But because I was always so short, they said, this is great. You've got a talent with your fists, but your legs are just so short. You're so short and stocky. Maybe boxing should be the, the sport for you. And I went over to the Louisville Light Boxing Club, which... Uh, 
Uh, yeah. by Ted P. Yeah, which no, we lost, Ted which we lost P. You in lockdown. Ted P. You know, rest um, his soul was an amazing man. And um, yeah, and, and the, the story uh, started from there. Which incidentally, you know, I'm sat in me, you know, for bad me for saying this, I'm sat in me nice house with nice things around me. But I've never moved out of a ten mile radius. The gym I started is three minutes down the road. Yes, yeah. you know that's what I've always liked to think. Is why people like me because I never, I've always, I've never been anything other than just a, a local lad doing well. And uh, when you, how old was you when you when you sort of really took boxing into right? This is what I want. I mean, obviously. You, you start when you're young, seven, eight, nine, ten. Some people young, and you start fighting till you're twelve in the amateurs. But do you know where you, where the people sort of thought, "Hang on, you're not just a kid that uh, that likes boxing." Yeah. When did someone spot that? Like, yeah, there's well, something about you could go all the way. It's serious at first. I had a um, couple of mates, Steve Bell and Tony Fino, used to go to the um, to the gym at High Blue Light Gym, and we used to just go there just to mess about, have a bit of a fight, have a bit of a spar, you know, have a have a, have a boxing match, have a fight. We used to just go for a laugh, and Ted was uh, Ted was such a such a larger than life character. You know, as a youngster, you just you know, I him. You couldn't wait to go to the gym, not just to do the boxing, but for a laugh and to see Ted and to see me. Um, and it was good. But then um, when I went, to, when I got to thirteen years of age, I um, ended up winning my, my first schoolboy title um, with a, with another coach, Mr. Paul Dunn from the Sale West Boxing Club. Won my first uh, schoolboy title at 13, and I, in every round, I won my first round knockout. Did you? Wow. People in the final were saying, sure, oh, he's won the box. I was a body puncher. Yeah, of course. All the amateurs were traditionally you know, like and that. they had, they had, yeah. they, they carried yeah. the guard really, high. and also body punches. This is another thing. Before we get into all the body punches, they never counted him in amateur boxing. You didn't get counted for as a shot for the body punch. And it was just like what you didn't matter when you're knocking him well, out first round. Doesn't matter. Counted. I won't get any points for this, but get on the floor. Coming in, giving it, giving it all that, rolling and body punching and stuff like that. They said, "Oh my god, look at him." And then, Mister, can I just ask how? Was that just your natural, like, oh, this is how I'll do it? Or did someone, like, try and train that style into you? Or was that just you? I started with Ted P, and then I went to um, to Sail West with Mr. Dunn. Mr. Dunn was an ex-professional boxer, Irish, Irishman. And um, he taught me how to body punch and hook and roll and slip and, you know, and bob and weave, you know, which, you know, traditionally amateurs were all very upright. And um, it started from there. And then um, I got to about 15, 16 years of age, and Mr. Dunn said to me, he said, listen, Rick, he said... Uh, I probably took you as far as I can take you there now. You know, you've won national titles, you've boxed for England and, you know, and stuff like that. But I'm going to have to take you uh, to someone that can take to that next stage. And he took me to a lot of gyms in Manchester. He, he took me to the Brian News, Collier yeah, Stone. Yeah. And he took me to Billy Graham's. And Billy Graham um, traditionally had the body belt. You know, that was his, that was his training. Um, everyone was geared around the body belt, the training, and me being a body puncher anyway. Just fit like a glove, and there was fighters there from Manchester, like Steve Foster, Ensley Bingham, Maurice Core, Cal Thompson, Cal Thompson, a cruiserweight champion yeah. at the time. And as soon as I joined there, I was training with them every day, and it must have been like seventeen. And they were sitting around and saying to me, "Listen, Ricky, if you stay at this game, dedicate yourself. If you've got the other boxes ticked that you're going to need to take along the way, like your heart, your determination, your chin, your desire, and you know, and all them stuff." You'll be a world champion. And I thought, oh, these, these are, these are the, these are, oh, these are the champions that are saying this. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not some fat, you know, you know, someone down the pub who's just said, oh, you know what I mean. These are the, these mm. are the present champions. And uh, that's when I think the penny dropped. You know. But could have gone either way though. Like you see, you know, there's, there's, the, the the world's littered with footballers who were like, oh, I was 15 and I was the best in the team and I was this. And, but you know, I got interested in like drinking and girls and this and that, and I didn't dedicate. You're being told at 15, you dedicate yourself to this. Yeah. Could have gone either way, right? But of it could. And I think it's a turning point though, when you know, when you when you're 17, whether you do whether you do football, acting, boxing, mm. whatever, once you get to like that 17 stage, you know, yeah. you, you've got to dedicate yourself to, 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 to acting, to football. And you've got to not do that. Drinking for you. Well, <laughs> well no, no. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair. Not <laughs> 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 anyone to do that. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> to be fair, it wasn't that bad for us either. We, we got away with it too. No, I'm saying for sport, <laughs> do as I say. Any youngsters out there, do as I say. No, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> but no, but yeah, but, but my boxing always come priority. And I used to go out and have a little drink. It's been well common knowledge and stuff like that. But my boxing always come priority. And that's what it's going to be, whether it be in football, acting, boxing, whatever path you want to go down you, you, you've, it's got to mean more than, mm. than that once you get to 17 you go out for the pint you find out what your will is for and yeah. like that. <laughs> that's it's true. so easy go yeah. downhill for you and, um, th- thankfully I wish I was able to find out when I was 17 he still looks like he's willing big, big late start on me I know, I know. <laughs> he still looks at it goes what do you do oh I know what it does it's just it's persuading someone else to do it with that's the problem <laughs> can you find a fucking friend I'm sick of seeing you <laughs> <laughs> Massive left wrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the size of Ralph's fucking right arm? It's a belter. <laughs> I'm, uh, no, I'm, um, I mean, as it, like you say, you're 17. It is a turning point where you, you do find out uh, girls, and, and, and that's when you're tested, I think, as if I don't get my head down here. This, this can go another way. Well, I mean, if you're polite, that's how it starts. <laughs> I mean, it's never because I've got to be you know, you know, warm them up first. Said, whatever you do. But in boxing, if you don't, you, you, you get found out, don't you? There's no you hiding place well, in that yeah, fucking yeah, ring. Yeah, There's exactly. no hiding place in that the ring. The only way you learn in boxing, unfortunately, is by getting it. <laughs> and that's, and it's, but you didn't mind getting it, because I remember Billy Graham saying, uh, this kid walked in, because he used to look like a bit of a choir boy. He had this little fringe hair. Because I was, when my dad said, you want to see this? Ricky Hatton fight my dad my dad watched boxing religiously and I watched boxing religiously every time it was on whatever fight was on me and my dad would sit and watch it and he'd tell me he told me about Mike he said this kid Mike Tyson he'll be the next world champion trust me and then he saw Ricky and he said wait, wait to see this kid fight doesn't take a back step and he had this little flat nose and he came in with his hair and he, he didn't look he he's like a choir boy but fucking ferocious and I remember Billy Graham saying when you came in the gym to, to look at you he said he came in and he had this little flat nose and he said he was like an animal he, he just wanted to get at people and he, and he knew then if you guide that right and I mean like I said a dangerous body puncher which you can't teach you can't teach power you've either got it or you haven't did you get in were you a fighter as a kid, like outside of the ring or not? I wasn't, normally. I wasn't, to be honest with you. I was always a, a, a good kid, you know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, all the years I've bumped into some of my old school teachers in the pub and I've had a fight and I've had to go, are you, sir? They go, yeah. <laughs> I, I still do that. It's mad, isn't it? It's mad. You do, don't you? And I was, I was saying, they go, oh, what was it like at school? What was Ricky like at school? Was it any trouble? They go, say, no trouble whatsoever. Never yeah. thought, no, nothing. Well, you couldn't get no work from him. But you came no. from a working class background. You know I, mean? I mean, and, and I had this self-belief from a very, very, from being 15, 16, probably even 14, where the teachers had said to me, and I used to say to the teachers, I've never been rude, but I used to say, I'm going to be a boxer, I'm going to be a world champion. Right. And I said that from right from the young age, and they still turn around and say that. I used wow. to say that, which, you know, youngsters out there, that's the bad way of looking at things because there was no guarantees. And if I if I hadn't done what I'd be boxing, I'd have found myself in the shit. You know, but then but it the flip work as serious. But the know? flip side to that is like that's that incredible self belief has got to have been part of it, right? Yeah. Without that kind of just absolute. Well, me, 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 me greatest attribute, I think, and Billy Graham said to me was my self belief. And even when people in the day said, you know, you'll never you'll never get to world title level. What do you think? Well, we'll talk about this. A little bit later, but you know, to, to get to the to the fight, the likes of Mayweather, who's probably arguably the greatest of all greatest time, Pat Kerr, another one of the greatest of all time, Koshi Zoom, probably one of the greatest light like, welterweights of all time. Not you know, not only you won't get to a title level, no, not not world title level, world title pound for pound level. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that, that's yeah. because, um, and the people that used to knock me and said I couldn't do it, that was my fuel. Yeah, you know what I mean, I never used to call anyone. I never used to. When the press used to write about me, nah, he's. He's just a good ticket seller. He gets cut too often. His defence is a little bit leaky. He's not going to do it. I used, I used to, used to inspire me. Used to you watch me here. You got you yeah. watch me. You'll be rewriting these in a few years' time. Mm. And that's what, uh, and that's what was my, my my best attribute of him. We're talking about like fighting outside of the ring, right? Or not? On a night out, I've been on, I've been on a couple of nights out with you when we did soccer aid and everything. And you strike me as when you've had a drink, you're basically the same person. As I've always found that I'm the same. Like I don't, I don't switch. I don't become like someone different and try and get in fights. And 
I don't think, from what I, I don't think you do. I, I say that because <laughs> he was back in the day. After three pints, he'd be like, I'm, I'm going, I'm going home <laughs> because I'm going to fucking punch him. He becomes, <laughs> he he becomes a fighter. He just, no. And his eyes started to run yeah. like runny eggs. I, I used to, my temper would get shorter every beer I'd have. And then no. someone who'd give me a bit of shit, you know, they go, if you're on the telly and all that, you'd always get, you're that wanker on the telly, you fucking dickhead. And then you turn, you can turn a blind anything. Curiously though, I'd be with him on the same beers, nights I'm out. Be, I'm no, one, to the top, no one would say that. No one would say that to me and I'd never get in any fights. So yeah. there's definitely something. But he'd be Maybe like, was mean. and he'd be like after a beer and he'd just go, I'm fucking gone. But did you ever have that? Or did you did you kind of get it all out in the ring? Like you get all that aggression out in the ring? No, I think I've always been brought up to be, you know, to be very placid and very, very laid back. You know what I mean? I'd never turn a picture down. Never, never turn. Not 100%. Never turn never a picture 100%. down. Because, you know, that, person, that one person you turn around and say, no, piss off, you know what I mean? You know, but why would you turn it down? They're the people that feed, they're the people that give you the support. I never have. And I went, I mean, people say, don't, but people, you get people starting on you like that. And I think, well, no, <laughs> very, very rare. Probably can count on one hands when people have actually started. Well, yeah, because, because you're a fucking boxer. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm going to start with Ollie Oates, playing yeah. Jambo. Playing <laughs> Jambo yeah. and Ollie Oates, yeah. a lot of people wanted to call me a wanker. If it was across, like, like Ralph said there, if it was up across the pub saying, look at me, or walk into fruit and queues, or do this. Of course, yeah. Of course, yeah. Look at that dickhead or whatever. Well, because I've always been the way. And as I get more pissed, I just go a little bit merrier. Me too. You get more friendly. I'll be having you. Come here. Me yeah, too. Like, I've always had that. And if I'm like, if I go, oh, what did I do last night? And I look back at my text. Yeah. The most embarrassing thing I've done is tell everyone that I love them. Yeah. Oh, it was just great to me. I met someone for an hour. You're amazing. Thanks so much for hanging out. And I'm like, oh, that's mortified. But you say you don't jump, you don't go to the front of queues. <laughs> Tell me about your trot as independent trading yeah, van yeah. <laughs> driving up to the, the red living carpet, room in Manchester in the red yeah. carpet. I've always been a bit of a practical joke. <laughs> I mean, back in the day in Manchester, we all know the living room. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember it. Yeah, yeah, Dean's like good. Red carpet, one day on the you know on the front, and there was a queue, and you you pretty much had to be on guest list, didn't yeah, you? you know, yeah. so. And I know uh, I know a couple of fellows, but the old guard who used to used to go in in the living room. And I'd be free will back. <laughs> I was yeah. driving at the time. He was a little bit, he was a lot younger than it was now. <laughs> yeah. Death trap now. We used to drive in there and like four or five mates would jump in the back. But one night we went we all to, the, to the living room, to the front door. This three wheel van turned up. The, the arm was. <laughs> <laughs> and then I like, jump out and they go, fucking get him. And I'd open the back door, four or five mates would jump out. <laughs> and then the boy. the t shirts and trainers. Off, and you could see it, you could see like. You know, the, the, the girls, and well, girls and the lads that, you know, have been... Queuing for an hour and a half. Queuing for an hour and a half. <laughs> must have been getting, took them about four hours to get dressed, looking beautiful. <laughs> and then me and my five or six mates were about to jump out of the back. Yeah. 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 Right. You just ro just rolled out the pub at closing yeah. time, yeah. straight yeah. down, yeah. That's and great. That's nice. Like, I've, I've always been a practical joker, and I think that's why I've always wanted to live in, in, this, in this area, because that's what... The people in this area are all like every one of my mates. They're just another, you know, just another Ricky Allen in the sense that you, yeah. you know, it's like filming a Jackass movie going to the pub here. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. like, what's, 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 it's great. I love it, and I think that's what people. Because they've always saw that me. I think I like to think that's why they uh, had the support. Did not you, right. You've always had a. Um, it's, it's pure personality, but you've always had a relationship with the press where you've always been like dry, sarcastic, funny, take the piss out yourself. Um, and I think that's what's one of the things that's won people over a bit your, your support base. But <laughs> we're talking about practical jokes. <laughs> where, where, where did R Ricky Fatten come from? And tell me about the fat suit. <laughs> uh, I, um, I got beat by Mayweather. And um, yeah, I was really depressed after the Mayweather fight. I felt like racking, you know, packing it in and that. And I know a lot of people would say, listen, Ricky, what are you, what are you worried about? You've got beat by Floyd Mayweather. God, what's up with you? But, you know, I mean, I was, I mean... I that, that was your first defeat, right? First Ever, defeat, yeah. first knockout defeat. And it was like, it was one of those where... I didn't just fight Mayweather, but you know, for for my best payday, and you know, and I and just just for the big. You believe you beat him as well. I beat him. Like, I believe you beat him. All the people that come over, forty thousand people who come over, watch me when I got beat. 
Do you know what I mean? I wasn't just there to make up the numbers and get that check and all that. I, I wanted to be him. I really did. I didn't like the fella. I know. And when I didn't, you know, um, when I come back home, I couldn't show my face, all my functions and me, me after dinner speaking and all that. I didn't want to go and leave the house. And I was paranoid walking on the street. I thought everyone was laughing at me. Right, right. Didn't need to. Totally wrong. But that's I've, I've, that, my weakest, weakest part of Ricky Hatton has always been that, that, that thing between my ears sometimes. And um, but anyway, I decided to carry on with the fight. And the best way the fans could support me was 60,000 fans at the City of Manchester Stadium. Wow. When I bought Juan Lascaro, it was uh, yeah. absolutely brilliant. But because I went through such a period where I put so much weight on and I felt like wrapping the game in, I always put weight on, but I put a little bit more on than normal. And they put this picture in the paper and I was, I was, I was fucking huge. I was massive. What were even you like? Fucking hell, that's bigger than I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a white yeah. my, my, my mirror must be slightly like House of Mirrors because yeah. that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the mirrors you get from Black yeah, Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I thought to myself, I was, and I was absolutely massive and they were turning around, he's never going to be the same fighter, he's never come back from that knockout defeat. Look at the state he's in now, he's finished. And I used to be, I'm showing you, you wankers. Mm, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that was, like I said earlier, the press and the, the knockers were my my drive in order to do mm. it. And then I thought to myself, because I always got on well with, with the sports press, you know what I mean? Always got on well with every single one of them. But I thought, I'm having a pop at you, mate. Mm. I can have a pop at these without mm. coming out and saying it. Yeah, and it's like a dick. Yeah. So I come out in this fat suit, you know, <laughs> walking out like that, and I just went over and I looked over the rope. She went over the top rope. I looked over the whole press room. I went, you won't be ready. Yeah. <laughs> I looked at him like that, and all, all the press just went, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair play. Started clapping. And that's the relationship I... Um, it was great. I, I had with, me, with, the, with, with the... But I think that I was... I'll tell you what, some balls, to get knocked out by my one, I think about packing in and then go 60,000 fans and walk well, out on the fat suit one. <laughs> You know I mean? that, that's that's why the fans. I think the fans followed you is because you come. You're a working class lad, um, and you've never changed no matter what. And we, listen, we're in your amazing house and your success is around you. But you you are always still just Ricky Atten, um, and I think that's what they see. And I think I think the, the one of the biggest things that I saw when I went to Vegas to see you fight was it was like walking around your hometown and we were in Las Vegas. Yeah. Everywhere you looked, it was like, all right, Will's like, all right, mate. You fucking know, it was flooded. And I remember the weigh-in, it was a weigh-in for the Urangu fight and it, it was in a casino and they had the slot machines everywhere. And I've got people where I went, missing big enough. Because they did not know what he brought. Is it, it just, no, they were talking, not, it was fucking chaos. Talking about a casino, have you, have you seen this? Like know. next to my legs. This is, is this the this is from a table. This is from an actual yeah, blackjack table. The, uh, the, the blackjack. Um, so we'll, we'll get the camera over in a bit. But there's Ricky actually in from an actual fight. Yeah, there's a story yeah. Ricky will tell you. This is Ricky Atten, and this is Paulie Malanaz when he fought, and this is off a, a blackjack table. It's actually the <laughs> tabletop. Yeah. And tell the story. About you know, in America, you, you always have to show ID everywhere. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. It, you know? yeah. And just for security reasons, you know what I mean? But he's like, you've got ID to me. <laughs> well, yeah, honestly, I walk into ID. a bar you know, in America, they go, yeah. it's just a normal bar, they go, you got ID. I'm like, I'm 41 years old. Yeah, no. How young do you think I am? I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> I didn't tell did me, I didn't tell me ID. I was, I was at the black belt table and say, I've got $200. Say, I'm going to change two, change 200, please. And he went, ID, sir. And I was like, ID, you taking the piss? She was like, ID, sir. I went, there's me there. You're, de <laughs> you're dealing the cards <laughs> onto my, my face. face. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, hey, yeah, man, whatever. Really? She wasn't yeah, having it? No way. And everyone around me, all the Brits were around me going, hey, yeah. Oh, that's so funny. No, I need your ID, man. No, no like, way. Jesus, but, uh, but no, somebody... Uh, can, can I ask you about, um, since we're talking about the Mayweather fight, I'll, t I'll tell you why I particular, I'm particularly interested in that. So Will's followed boxing his whole life, and actually um, it was never something that I understood or knew much about. And when we were doing, oh, we're when we were doing two pints, Will, um, uh, we stayed up when we were doing two pints. We stayed up in Daresbury in Runcorn to watch yeah. the Delahoy. Was it Delahoy That's Mayweather? That's Delahoy against Mayweather. When I fought Delahoy, won that fight. And yeah. I was saying to him, I was doing better work <clears> on the time. Uh, yeah, and, and he was saying, and, and it, he was so knowledgeable about it. He was like, "So Delahoy, this is his background, and he wants to get inside mm -hmm. Mayweather." And I was like, "Well, he really knows his shit." And then he predicted the result, and then, and I also predicted that the judges were going to give it to Mayweather. <laughs> right. but I thought he won it. So that, so there was all that. So 
So Will sort of got me interested, and 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 that's my interest in boxing. But like, I'm a sort of a, 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 an armchair fan at best. But <sighs> nobody, I swear to you, there, there has never been a sporting event, not one, not not any World Cup, not not even United in the Champions League. There's never been a sporting event that I have felt so emotionally connected to as wanting you to beat Floyd, Way Floyd Mayweather. And that is all about you. Do you remember what I said last night, though? What? He wasn't just fighting Mayweather. Joe Cortez would not let Ricky work on the inside. And that's what we were talking about last night. Yeah, the true, referee, yeah. Do you remember the referee yeah. in that fight? Yeah. And I remember halfway through, you turned around and bent over and said, why are you just fucking bum him? You were like, Did you? fucking bent. I don't remember that, mate. <laughs> yeah. No, well, it was like... I said, it was pissing you off. I said to Billy Graham before the fight, I said, Billy, I said, uh, you know... 40,000 fans have come over to, to Vegas here, you know. said, Mayweather's from Vegas, do you know what I mean? Exactly. Said, referee's from Vegas. Exactly. I said, you know, I said, I just hope the referee does the right job and just lets me fight on the inside, lets me get... It was the only chance you had? And I, cause I thought to myself, I'm not going to outbox him, I'm not going to outspeed him. The only chance I've got is if I do get close enough, I will throw more than him. Mm. And that was the thing. And then as I got near him, <clears throat> I'm not saying that... I'm not going to be a hypocrite now and say that. The only reason why I got beat by Floyd Mayweather was because of the referee, because I might not have won anyway, but right. what I'm saying is... You want a right what, chance. I only wanted a fair crack at the yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did they give it me that night? I don't know. I, I, I'm, I, I know they didn't. I was... Breaking me and breaking me. And from the second round onwards, I come back to my corner at the end of the first round, I went, Billy, I said... I said he's not going to let me in. He's not going to let me yeah. in. He's not going to let me in. Right. And then they took a point off me. I think it was round five or six. Well, I turned him and I threw a punch. Yeah. And it, it missed him. And um, he took a point off me. And I, if you know your boxing, it's not me, you know, you know, sour grapes and all that. It, it, it is a fact that if, you, if you're boxing, you get a warning. Don't do that. Yeah, the exactly. You do it again, second warning. One more time, there's a point off. But he just took it off me straight away. And I mm. just thought, and then when the referee went box on and I turned me back on him like that. Yeah. So the referee went, what are you doing? Went, Where do you want me to fucking hit him? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, you that, you're out, took your out, and I said, I bet you'll fucking fuck me out, you know, yeah. you know, whatever. And then my head fell off then. I think really, that's why, do you think that's, that's why you got caught, because you started jumping yeah, into shots when you never... But, you know, along with that and his... His masterful boxing, his boxing brain, his defence. Yeah. His, his, you his can't hit him, can you? He went yeah. to put his foot in the gas, went to let the storm blow itself out with me, let go and let the little, let the little fat fucker have a bit of a go. <laughs> so, you know, now yeah. I'll put my foot in the gas. I mean, it, it wasn't just a referee. Like I'm saying, I might not have won it anyway, but I think, you know, you look at when my Dana was able to get close to Floyd Mayweather, split decision. Exactly. Close. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know I mean? Well, well, and yeah, then, uh, I totally Castillo, agree. For yeah. him. I thought Castillo beat him in the first fight because he was allowed to get to him. Mm. So you can't tell I me that he was capable of yeah, winning 100%, that fight. 100%. I'm not saying he was a referee that ultimately lost it, me. No. But, I mean, whatever chance I had, that referee threw out the fucking window. Well, the do, one do you thing like, about sorry. boxing is if you've got someone who can move his head a lot, what do you say? You work the body because they can't move the body as much as they move the head. And also, you slow him down, and that's the and the one chance Rick had. And this what was it was so frustrating to watch because as soon as, like you said, after round one, I thought this referee ain't gonna let Ricky work here. <clears> and then the frustration <clears> made there's you there's make mistakes. They're normally doing the changing rooms. Um, they have the uh, they have the TV on. So you can you can watch the, the previous fight. So you get a, you get a, especially in America, you get a gist of how long you're gonna be. Do you know what I mean? If there's yeah, a, yeah. If, if there's a knockout, oh, shit, I'm on in ten minutes. You know. Yeah, what I mean? really. Yeah, but yeah. You can watch the rounds as they go by and that. What they did, they had uh, Tom Jones in the ring. He sung the national anthem for me, and this other gentleman got in the ring and he sung the national uh, anthem for the United States. And as they sung it, was it you could hear you could hear Tom Jones was singing the national anthem, so it was warming up, getting emotional and everything like that. And then this gentleman sung the national anthem for the United States. And then just then the crowd started booing the started booing their national anthem. Why? And listen, it, it's just it's not nothing personal. It's just a football thing. We do it at football all yeah. the time. And it's like the, I don't think the, the Americans are used to. to so you mean the, you mean the English crowd started booing the I got you, yeah, I got you. Yeah. And we see that how many times you see that at football, and it is a bit mm. it's a bit Mm. But, but you know, it, it's just it's just what comes with passion as well. Like, but, I mean, but I don't know if you've watched like was, American sports change. don't do that. No, no, you watch an American sport and it's all like, oh yeah, can I have a hot dog? Like they, they don't they don't sing songs and show yeah. abuse. That's well, a we, very very football thing. We do. It is a, it is a very football. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. But when Tom Jones, Tom finished singing the national anthem, and then this gentleman started singing the national anthem, and they started booing. 
I looked at I just put a note, I looked at Billy and I went, could have fucking done without that as well. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm thinking, oh, yeah. referee, let's be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, American referee. Really, you were thinking of that? We're in there. Yeah, we're in, we're in their backyard. backyard yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like that. And I think all things con- considered, I think, you know, I remember at the weighing. Said, I'm not blaming any other fans. Remember at the weighing. Because I mean, that's just what we do. You know? No, but there's, there's. I, I assume it's like there's a hundred. Like you prepare, prepare, prepare. But there's like a hundred little tiny moments that all. Then you look back at it and go, did that have an effect? It's when you said you were just warming up, and you were getting emotional, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. Like because. No, it's a very different sport, but way, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, but it's a very different sport. But I remember Rio Ferdinand once saying that um, he got really hyped up and emotional about a World Cup game, and he was like, "Yeah, come on, this is great! I can't believe it!" And and they lost for for England. And he said from that day on, he promised himself he'd never attach any emotion to a game again. He'd be purely, purely ice cold professional. And so, like, but did you find it better? Did you find it more like more encouraging to just be like, yes, I'm here, and or whatever, yeah, or is it I, difficult I, to temper? I thought, yeah, we'll have a bit of this, you'll have a bit of this. It's, yeah, it's yeah. hyped me up a little bit. Well, and every individual's different. I mean, I fought with um, I fought with my passion, I fought for my fans, I fought yeah, for yeah. my country. You I took a shot for Manchester. You t- you t- what, that's what I did. And then it's like, I'm not, not saying real didn't. No, 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 sure, yeah. yeah. I'm just, just mm. saying that's, you know, it's always a passionate guy. But you know, what works for one person doesn't work forever. Or they, you know, used to have like Linford Christie and all those, that, that generation, they used to just oh, stare yeah. down the thing and that's what everyone did for years and then Usain Bolt turned up and he's like to, dicking yeah. around and everyone's like, oh, I'll do that now. So it do, not everything works for everyone, no, does I it? I mean, everyone's different, everyone's, everyone's different. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, the, the minute Tom did it, I was like, oh, yeah, we'll have yeah. a bit of this. And then yeah. Tom, Started doing, you know, yeah. the, the American, the Stars and Stripes national anthem. I was like, yeah, we'll have a bit of this. And then all of a sudden they started doing it. I went, oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't yeah, just, yeah. It was like, it wasn't like, just oh, a few that's, people. That's not good. Because I knew how the I knew how the American people were going to react to that. Because like you said before, well, they're not used to it. We are. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, no one especially especially with the thing, that, you know, that that would be going on, you know, you know, September 11th, and yeah, you know, yeah. and, and stuff like that. I couldn't have done it at a worse time. Nah, no. Nah. Fresh in the in, in the, they they, they, they take they take patriotism very seriously, the Americans. Yeah, yeah. we took 40, 40, 50, 000 people to Vegas. Mm. No one's ever done that. Yeah. No, I feel very. Really, uh, you know, my heroes still be heroes. You know, you know, Nigel Ben, Frank Bruno, and Frank Bruno went over there and he fought Mike Tyson. I think he took yeah. about ten or twelve thousand or something like that. When you think, you know, I think for the uh, Urango fight, I think the first round was about eight thousand. And then Castillo was about 15, then Mayweather was 40, oh then Manhardi was like 20, wow. and then Pacquiao was like 30. But like, they, like they, the numbers, it's like, I mean, it's, it's like fairy tale stuff. Yeah. I, know it, I know it did actually happen, but yeah, I've yeah. got the proof. Yeah. <laughs> but like, look around well, those yeah, small fairy tale. You know, you know the, the pictures and that, you think, I've, I've got the proof, but you know, sometimes, you know, you think, did that, you know, the kid from Attersley going there to Las Vegas? But I, I, don't sing the national I get it though, Just, I get it. Like I say, as someone who's like, boxing was never even my sport and I've never been much, to this day, I've never been more emotionally connected to wanting a result than wanting you to win that then that's about you and but also it's about you but it's also about and I don't want like if you don't want to answer this fine but it's also kind of about that Floyd Mayweather's kind of a dick isn't he <laughs> yeah. I mean he's just a I mean he's a, an amazing boxer but you wouldn't want to have a drink with him would you he's a prick well, he's, um, I, mean, I mean Will said that I don't I mean, agree I mean, but Will's always slagging him off <laughs> he's not here <laughs> yeah. right. but like honestly you, and one of the things I think that was so winning is you, you know you're so dry and so, and he'd be like, so kind of like the American. Tyson Fury has a bit of it as well. Tyson, Tyson Fury has a bit of it as well. Like Deontay Wilder was trying to go, I'm going, I'm going to kill this man. I'm going to, and Tyson Fury's like, I'm going to fucking smash your face <laughs> in, <laughs> you prick. And it's just so winning. And it was a bit like what you were doing. Their boy, Mayweather was just being like, I'm the man, I'm the money. And, and, and you're like, like you know, I've got a four year old, and it's like the same thing. I think you said something like that. I think that 24. 24- 24 7 program was great because yeah. I mean, yeah. and I think it won some sort of award in the United States after having yeah, a documentary of the year or, or something like that. Because, <coughs> and I, I think American fight fans will, or, or all fight fans will agree with me, it was so good because you couldn't have got two more opposites. Yeah. Mm. You know, Floyd going on about his, 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 his car and his watch and his gold chain around his neck <sighs> and his bracelet mm. and, you know, stuff like that, you know. And then you'll see me in the darts, in the pub playing darts. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> I'm a pirate bubble at City. <laughs> and it was just sort of like, you know, um, 
he was just sort of like, you know, good cop, bad cop, and I think cop, good cop, bad cop, and it was that's why it was just that's why I think it, why it was so successful. And I, I don't know Floyd Mayweather personally. I only know him because I'm, you know, what I did on the twenty four sevens, what I'm seeing at the press conference, and that, you know, I for all I know, I he might be a nice person. But one thing I can guarantee is that um, he was from Michigan, I think, Floyd. Detroit, yeah. The, yeah, I yeah. Think, think he was from. I mean, he's from Detroit, I'm sure. Detroit, know. Michigan, now. Ohio, or something. Oh, okay. Anyway, where he's from his own town. He, he, we did went there for the twenty four seven, and it's like you know I come right from the council estate. You know, in America they call them the projects. Projects. Yeah. Same, it's the yeah. same sort of like thing as over here and over there. Yeah. And you know, like people support me, won't they? Because they say, you know, I've come from Cattersley Council Estate. You know what I mean? And I've done well, you know, but I've always kept my feet on the ground. I've still done my charity work. And I've still got my gym in my, my hometown and I'm still mm -hmm. trying to do... And I've still kept me saying, but I, 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 I don't think... I think if I what, did an interview on the TV and I turned around, the Manchester people were watching it, and I turned around and said, look at me car, look at me watch, look at me this. Oh, look mate, yeah. People from the council state where I born, they that that. They want to not fuck out of me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's not what these they, they, people from the council states and the projects, they work every hour. Yeah, sense, yeah, yeah. Hard, and struggle. So yeah. Family, kids, don't have holidays, can barely put food on the table. So they want, don't want their local hero going, look at me, yeah. watch. No. And yeah. That's what I can never get about for no. it because he comes from the same. That's weird, isn't it? That's place so in true. America, the projects. The America's funny like that. Though. I spent a lot of time there. They're different like that. You, you know, they, they'll be very wicky like that, actually like that. And he's doing well. I don't believe they'll be saying, look at Floyd, didn't he sort of the earth? Yeah, no, no. Look how he just no. shows his watch to us all. Isn't that nice of him? You know? <laughs> I but I do it. think, by the way, culturally, culturally Americans, yeah. like in American culture, they're a bit like, oh, that could be me one day. Do you know what I mean? We'd be a bit like, mate, Stop it. And Americans are like, this is great. Thing, it's, it is a way to... But I can't see him driving around the Trotters Independent Trading Van anytime <laughs> soon, <laughs> can you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen Floyd in a sheepskin coat a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> he does look a dick with that. <laughs> <laughs> he does look a fucking dick, yeah. uh, So, so I, I kind of hoped that, I guess, I guess for like, that I had to create this idea in my head that, that he was sort of a knobhead in the build-up, but then afterwards he was like... You know, you went out for a drink and he was like, listen, you've been fucking great well, and everything. That's why I say I, but, that's but, why I say I don't really know him personally. But, but did that not happen? The press yeah. conference. Did you not have a beer after? No. I, I remember after the press conference, he said, uh, I'd like to congratulate Ricky. Ricky's one hell of a fight, so he pushed me hard, which I thought was, you know, yeah. which was nice. So even though, you know, we're, we're having a bit of a pop at him now, I mean, but at the end of the day, I, I, I don't think, I mean, I'd already made my... Uh, achievements, if you like, when I beat Costa Zoo, then I beat Carlos Mauser. All these weren't Floyd Mayweather, but Costa Zoo, you know, well, that's what I was you about. Carlos Mauser, one year, uh, Louis Carrazo won the World World Weight title against one year ago, Jose Luis Castillo. So I'd already, if, if you look at it from a, an achievement and a financial point of view, I'd made it. But yeah. the minute I thought Floyd Mayweather, my life changed. Even more so, you know, with the, the stuff I'm sat in today and the stuff that my kids, my grandkids and my family have been able to witness. I mean, it, you know, if I had, I, I don't know, I, I still, I'd made it, if if you like, mm. but life went to another level when I fought Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. So even though I'm having a bit of pop of him, you know, the yeah, fact yeah. that I was born in the era yeah. of Floyd Mayweather, yeah. I'll be forever. Yeah, but before we, before we move on from Mayweather, if you don't mind, so just, you touched on, like, well, that's interesting because, like, it changed everything in terms of, like, a payday and in terms of your reputation and all that kind of thing. But the flip side to that was you said you were in a bit of a dark space, a dark place after it. That's got to be a... You, on the one hand, you're coming home going, people sort of... Made millions of pounds. You made millions of pounds. Like, my life's changed forever. Every, my name will be in history. Everyone knows me. On the other hand, you said you walked down the street and thought people were laughing at you. Yeah. No. It's got to be, you know, there's nothing... There's nothing I can think of in my life. There's nothing so exposing probably I'll, I'll ever experience and certainly on you have experienced in your life that's so, like, that's so public and so hard to do. It Like, I mean, it seems like a stupid question, but, like, tell me about, like, what a dark, well, what, how difficult been, was it to be in really, such a dark place? Well, uh, well documented that <clears throat> over, over the years, you know, with, you know with, 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 with drink and drugs and in the main depression, I think the depression added yeah. to me, me, me drinking, I mean, me, me drug tape, yeah. 
when I got beat by Mayweather, as I said earlier, I said I was so down and depressed. I said I didn't just go there and make the numbers. I really thought I was going to beat him. Yeah. And then when I didn't, um, I was absolutely heartbroken and I was, I was down. But then I, you know, got myself up for the fight at Man City at the, at the Etihad Stadium, yeah. sixty thousand fans, absolutely brilliant. Uh, but it wasn't my best performance. And then Is that I, when we were when we watched him? No. Yeah. And then I ended up um, falling out with um, Billy Graham if you yeah, remember, at the yeah, time. Really, you're so true. you know. So I was down. And then yeah. I fought Paulie Malinaji and Nolan and Liam carried the belts in. And, you, you know, said that was your favourite picture. Favourite picture, yeah. The, yeah, where is it? Nolan and Liam carrying the belts in. Yeah, yeah. But I thought, I mean, I, I was, I, my, my best performance is the Costa Zoo fight. So I was back up again there. And then um, I fought Manny Pacquiao and then I got destroyed in two rounds. I fought a fighter of my, with the heart and stats, you know, the. I was a fighting person once, yeah. so to get destroyed in two rounds, you can imagine how bad that was. And then ultimately, I fell out with my mum and dad then. So if you look at, you know, I'm down for the Mayweather fight, up for the City fight, mm -hmm. you know, up for the Malinaji fight, fell out with Billy Graham, got knocked out by Pacquiao and back up again. Then, you know, fell out with my mum and dad and back down again. And me, me, me frame of mind was going like mm -hmm. that. And then when mm -hmm. I fell out with my parents, I didn't care whether they lived or died. Really? really, really, really did it. Did you get that far with it? Oh, that far. You know, I, I know several times I'd come in, I'd sit there, I'd be crying my eyes out, I'd have the knife at my wrist trying to, oh, trying to, wow. trying to, trying to kill myself. Never had the, never had that. Could never go through with it. You'd never go through with it. But then I thought to myself, I thought, listen, mate, you're not going to be able to do this. You just haven't got it in you. Go out, I'll go drink and drug myself to death. Mm. And I just went out and just drank off the off the radar. Loads and loads of drugs, but I thought to myself, listen, I've worked so hard to get what I've got to, and it doesn't matter being sat here now, if what you're framing your mind. I thought, at the time, I was sat in this house thinking, I'm, I'm, my mum and dad were there from day one, don't speak to them. Billy Graham was there with me all the way, don't speak to them. What, wow. what the fuck am I doing here? What, mm. what, what am I doing here? Yeah. And that's the way the mind, my mind went, and I thought, and then ultimately, when the story came in the paper, I mean, I didn't know. I, the only thing I can ask for is a bit of sympathy. Like, I was in a very bad place. You didn't know where the did fuck I was. Yourself? I think so, yeah. But I was in a very bad place. Didn't know where I was going, what I was doing, who I was with. And um, it was the most horrific time for for me. And not just for me, for family and friends, mm. even just locally. I'd go in the pub and sit there in the corner and get pissed. I'd just sit there crying on my own and people oh, would go, yeah. oh, what? what's happened to Rick a couple of years ago? He was beating him, beating him, beating him. Yeah. Oh, what? And uh, I won't wish that on my worst enemy. How would you get out of that? <clears throat> it's, always, it's always different for someone else. If there's something might trigger it off or something, you know, might might happen. But Millie was born, me, my first daughter, and I thought to myself, uh, come on, Rick, you know, you've got Campbell, you've got a cracking little lad there, you know, and Millie's come along here now. I said, it's not about you anymore. It's about getting yourself right for the family. There's people relying on you. Your kids are relying on you. And I tried to uh, I tried to do it, and uh, I got a little bit better, a few wobbles here and there, but I could, couldn't get it right. And then I went and saw a psychiatrist one time. I just phoned up, went down for meeting, threw me my arms around him. I said, I can't do this. I said, I can't really? do this. I said, I'm going to kill myself, and I don't know how to do it. I said, I don't know how to do it. He said, what does you, what does you, you, you miss his thing? And my, my, my ex at the time, I said, she knows I'm not right, but she doesn't know to what the extent was. Right. I'm not telling anyone. Yeah. yeah. Mickey Adams, you know, you know, yeah. I couldn't go to the pub and say to my mates, I'm crying, you know, baby, like, yeah, what yeah. should I do? You can't, you don't, do you? Yeah, no, I mean, that's what you yeah. should do. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I know that now. Yeah. But at the time, I was keeping it all in and I was a, I was a, I was a wreck. And yeah. bit by bit, started going there for treatment and Millie started getting older, a little bit bigger, and Campbell started doing well at school. And bit by bit, I got myself together, lost a little bit of weight. And then ultimately, I decided to make a, a comeback because... Um, I felt I needed to to get rid of a few demons, and not mm. only get rid of a few demons. I felt redeem myself, in fact, in in the in the eyes of my fans. But I know a lot of the fans will say, "Listen, we've all had problems. You're no different, Rick. Do you know what I mean?" What do you no, I was going to say, did, did, did you ever worry that you felt I you'd let needed, the fans down? I needed to to get it, yeah, to, to get it clear, and that's why I I made the comeback, and even though it didn't come off. You know, I got. I got stopped in the eleventh round. I picked a former world champion. No, you probably should have done. I should have picked a duffer first. Sort of <laughs> Just warm up. That's the one we saw, wasn't yeah, it? In Manchester. Yeah, I was there at that one, yeah. Ultimately, I think all the fans went, we've all had problems. You're no different, Ricky. And to go through what you've come from and to come back and to lose all that weight and to pick an opponent like you did and nearly beat him, mm. he said, fair play. And 
I know a lot of people were worried about me because they said, oh, Rick's head's going to fall off again here now after mm. getting beat. No, my head, has, my head didn't fall off and it, it's, never, it's never been more straight on since I, think I was said, able to move on with my life. I think you said you prove it to yourself. Yeah. You just said afterwards, it's just not there anymore. Yeah. It's just not there anymore. And yeah. you knew, you said, I had to find out for myself. We all think we've all got one extra one extra fight in us. You know, or, you know, footballers probably think they've always got one extra season and like that. And um, I needed to know, and I found out, you know, <laughs> I haven't got it anymore. And uh, But instead of my head falling off, like it usually done in the past, I'd reached a point in my life and the, the frame of mind that I'd got myself in because of the treatment and what was happening in my personal life. And if it had took me life, at the time when I wanted it, when I think I wouldn't have seen my granddaughter Lila, I wouldn't have seen Millie and Fern go up into the girls they're growing up to, I wouldn't have seen Campbell turn pro, wow. yeah. I wouldn't have made up with my mum and dad, and I wouldn't have made up with Billy Graham. I've done the whole lot now. Yeah, fantastic. And that's why, you know, Brilliant. if there's anybody out there that does suffer with it, you've got to go and speak to someone. Yeah. And don't be, don't, don't, don't have balls big enough where you go, oh, I'm not, I don't need it. You know, no, mm. you do. Go and speak to someone. It'll be the best thing you do. And it's the best thing, and I've never looked back. Yeah. You've always got... There's a documentary, I need to say this because we're on it, there is yeah. a documentary out about your last fight. I think it's called The Final Fight, is it? Yeah. Um, is it called The Final Fight? I, I watched it the other day. Um, it's the final round of Final, final Fight. It's, so, like it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's an amazing documentary and it takes you after you just come out, you come out of all your depression and all that and you, and you, and you go and have that last fight um, before you retired. Uh, an, an unbelievable, amazing, emotional... <clears throat> uh, but it, it's, it's sort of... After the story you just told, if anyone's listening to this or watching this, go and have a look at it because it's, uh, yeah, it puts it into context. And, and afterwards, you know, you just resign to the fact. And everyone's going, Ricky, you're going, you know, no, I'm all right. Yeah. I'm all right with and myself yeah, now. Absolutely. And I think people that, you, you need to have, people that don't get it will say, you know, and sometimes, you know, people say, what have you got to worry about? You know, I mean, you've you sat your big mm. house and you're this and that and all the rest of it. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't. That's what goes on inside yeah. your head. That's what that's what the normal. That, you know, you just state the obvious there, but you know, yeah. it's a lot mm. deeper than that with, that. with that mental health, and it's really, it's really, really is hard. But I mean, it, you know, the bad days don't last forever. They will last forever if you don't get off your ass and do something. Yeah. That sounds a bit it's selfish. Bad. No, it's you not. Gotta get up, do something every day. You feel like you feel pissed off, or which we do. I still feel pissed off some mornings. I don't mm. know why. I just do. Yeah. And I'll get up, I'll go and go for a run and then I'll have my breakfast and I'll go to the gym and I'll train my lads, I'll come back, have a cup of tea, the kids will come round, all right, brilliant, then I'll run them home and then I'll come mm -hmm. down and do a little bit of a run of the night and you know, my day's full, so my yeah. mind, my mind yeah. on, on this problem, what I had, might be nothing, has gone all of a sudden. Yeah. Do you think a lot of sportsmen probably come through that because they reach them heights? It's called, it's called like when the floodlights fade and stuff like that, there's football, well documented on footballers when they reach them peaks, when you retire or when you stop, what do you do next? You have to find a place for yourself in life. There's also so much there's out? so much structure in sport as well. It's like now what? You well, know? Yeah, now did you find that? Did you find a place I mean, for you know, yourself? The, the footballers I speak to that have had the, the mental health problems, you know, and I would just and I say they, they say to me, Don't you find it, you know, that we used to walk out to, you know, say seventy thousand at Old Trafford or fifty thousand at that city or, you know, or wherever and walk out to. And once you've hit, you know, in your, your you might said 60,000 at City Manchester Stadium, even the 20,000 that that Costa Zoo fight in Manchester, where, where night, Man night, Union yeah. fighting the best in the world in Manchester, 40,000 fans got Vegas, there's only one, Ricky Adam. Once you've had that level of, of, um, level of ecstasy, if you like, mm, that yeah. level of, you know, whoa, what a, you know, yeah, what a yeah. Yeah. and then all of a sudden it's gone. Yeah, and you think well, I'm, I'm retired now. I'm never going to fight again now. I'm never going to get that feeling. And then when things like me thinking with my mum and dad and Billy Graham and things start yeah. going on in your personal life, I tell you what, it's, you, if you think of it from in that in them yeah. context, it's massive no, highs, no surprise, massive, is it? Massive highs and it's massive lows. No yeah, it's no surprise. I also wonder if out of all, sorry, sorry, go on. Sorry, no, you go on. Go on. What did you do with yourself? I know you said you you went and see people, uh, mental health people, and all that sort of stuff, but. To how to find a sort of you still because you still train fighters right yeah so you keep your toe in the water uh, but you find you found yourself a place in life that now you go I'm all right with it I'm happy now I'm, you say you've got the, your grandkids your kids or whatever else you've got it's so you, you are you day to day you keep yourself busy you've fitness. got to do something just to take take your mind mind off it do you know what I mean it's like I see it's like having a it's like having a hangover I find if you have an hangover right. <laughs> If I, if I feel rough when I've had an hangover 
and I lie in bed. The longer I lie there, the worse I go. <laughs> yeah, that's true, <laughs> actually. If I get my fat ass and get out one, I'll do something. You feel better, That's don't you? actually a great you analogy. There, in, you know, with, with this is going through your mind and that's going through your mind and you think, oh, I'm not getting out of the bed here, me, yeah. today. You, you go worse mm. like you do when you have a hangover. Yeah, yeah. And I think, but if you get up and get out and go do a bit of run, or even, even if you're not a physician, run a walk, a bit of fresh air. Anything, yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. You know, just, just anything that can take your mind off fishing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm, fishing, yeah. Yeah, you know, you know I'm, I'm a patron of... Um, Tackling minds, which is a one, which is the same theory. Is if if I go to the gym and not you know set you know ten bells out of the bag for six rounds, let off a bit of endorphins, I feel, feel yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. And it's like something like fishing, go out, sit in the fresh air, cast, yeah. reel a few in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anything just to take your mind off it. But I promise you, you sit there and feel sorry for yourself, and I, I don't, and I get it why you do feel sorry for yourself. Yeah. But my advice is to you: you've got to you've got to do something to just. Take it away. I, if you sit there and ponder and ponder and ponder, you've got to go one way. Worse. 100%. I also I wonder if you were talking about footballers and retiring and walking out to 60,000 people. All of that, can, and that's sort of quite a common feeling or thing that people say when they've retired from like a top level sport. But it strikes me that boxing is probably like the hardest example of that. The, lo- the, the loneliest, the loneliest it, yeah. example of that because, yeah. you know, it, it's all you. You get to the top, the highs and lows, and then you retire and it's. The highs must be higher and the lows must be lower because it's not a team sport. Did you ever feel as well like you've got so many? Fa- you've always part of your appeal has always been you just absolutely all heart, heart on your sleeve, been very funny, very dry. You know, in the build up to fights and stuff. Did you ever feel when you were feeling down like, like you'd let the fans down? Did you ever feel responsible to the fans? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when the story came out in the paper, like I say, I was. I mean, I'm known as you know just a kid from the council estate, Jack the lad, you know, feet on the floor, no airs, no graces, and but I was I was poor, and you know yeah. I like to think when you, you you think what are you talking about the highs of having that role, the crowd and this that and Vegas we've been here with that, and then you fall out you know with with, with family members and you fall out mm-hmm. with your trainer mm-hmm. and you fall out with this and that, you know I'd like to think that people can now they'll, they'll say you know what. No wonder, you know what I mean? I can imagine that, you know what mm. I mean? You're used to that, that raw, the crowd, you're used to this, and then all of a sudden it's not there. It's, it, it is very hard, and people people get it now, but at the, at the, at the time, people just used to... I, I, I thought, in my mind, oh, no, the, no, no, the bollocks, mm. I thought he's, he's a fraud, he's a fake, you know what I mean? And, mm. and it wasn't. I was just very, very poorly, and I think, yeah. you know, when I mentioned the reasons to you guys there, like I mentioned, you know, oh, is yeah. it, you, you can see why it happened. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. The pre- pressure must be must be, must be immense. Talk, talking about, I mean, it might be connected, it might not, but one of the things that you were always like, sort of infamous and famous for, like a lot of people were like, he's amazing, right? But then people go, well, I don't know, is like your like body transformation. You've had more body transformations than Christian Bale. Like, you know, how he's, I'll do this part now and that part now. Um, and like you used to just be like, well, I'm, I'm off duty now, so I'm just going to eat what I want and have a t- takeaway and whatever. And then you'd get in shape for a fight and you'd be in this incredible shape and sort of relatively quickly. And it was always, my perception of it was always like, well, if, that, if he can do that and be in shape, then he's in shape. And I just wonder now, now that I'm a bit older as well, like looking back, do you think, do you think that that took, its t- took a toll on, on your body or would you, would you have been better off staying in relatively good shape? Very much so, very yeah. much so. And my trainer, Kerry Kay, is my nutritionist, said to me, he said, sooner or later, Ricky, he said, at the minute, you're young, you can burn it off and everything like that. He said, but sooner or later, your body will go, no, just can't, just can't do it anymore. And, um, I mean, when I first started off, <clears throat> when I was doing the four rounders and the six rounders, I had first, I had nine fights in my first 12 months. That's like a fight every six yeah, weeks. So yeah, I lived yeah, in the gym and right, right. It's only once I got up to, to championship level where I'd have three fights a year, the gaps were bigger in between, mm. where I put on, put on weight. Mm. And I, you know, I wouldn't train it. I wouldn't change it any for anything. Yeah. Me personally, I wouldn't go. If I could go back, I wouldn't change it for anything in the gym because the fan base that I got and the, the support that I got was he's a he's a he's a lad. He's a, he's a ledge. Yeah. Oh, let's go walk yeah. into Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Last night, yeah. you see, you know, and and that's what it is. But but now, I mean, moving forward, I think I, I could have got maybe a couple of more years out of myself. And I think if I hadn't done burnt the candle at both ends with my lifestyle and, and me making the weight and that, who's not to say, you know, I, I wouldn't have performed even better mm, yeah. than what I was performing at. I think it definitely did. I did it with one hand tied behind my back, you know, in, in the latter years. And I, 
I wouldn't change it for the world because that's why people like me because I was a rum little fucker. But now <laughs> Campbell's gone pro and now I train my lads and professionals and everything like that. I tell you what, they will not be doing what I do. Yeah, right, of course. You know what I mean? They come in the gym, you know what I mean? They get weighed every time before the train, every time after the train. They go on holiday, right? I don't want you to come back any heavier than everything than that. And they keep an eye on it because I know it did affect me. It did affect me. Right. You know, I, you know, I... It's, I'm not knocking the career he had and it didn't have a bad Not too bad, mate. But, but that pool says it, it was pretty good. It was not to say it, I, I couldn't have been, I couldn't have performed a little bit better. I mean, you know, it's not rocket science. Or it? longer. Up in weight, down in weight, up in weight. That affects your organs, it affects mm. your whole body. Oh, and I, I, I think people who and watch... That's why I don't want me boxers to do it. I think people who watch boxing, uh, who don't follow boxing religiously, who go, oh, there's a big fight on, you know, like, especially when there's a, you know, it's all over the news and when you used to fight and people would see it all over, they'd go, oh, I watched this, even if you weren't a Boxing fan, they just see two blokes in the ring fighting. But I think it's interesting for people to know when you're in preparation for a world title fight or a big fight like that, what your weekly routine would be. Yeah, I'd love to know your weekly or daily routine. So what, what, you, but before you, we do, what? can we get another beer since we're talking about all this? <laughs> <laughs> now seems like a perfect time. <laughs> Let's get another beer, Rick. <laughs> yeah, and then find, the find out about yeah. your day. Hey, welcome to the ad break. We yes. wanted to bring it to you. This is our final rehearsal for our, yeah, for for our, our two tour. pints tour. Yeah, um, so you're welcome. Okay. You're, you're first to see it. Look at us on stage. Know, yeah. are, you, are you shitting it? Shitting myself a little bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've got a little word from our sponsors. No um, word from the sponsors. Yeah. yeah. It, it was it this, uh, this time? It's Manscaped. 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 To Manscaped. We're, we've, we've got this great working relationship with Manscaped. They're great. Um, uh, would well, they keep uh, wanting to sponsor us and we keep having to uh, find ways to talk about shaving our balls. And we're always here to help <laughs> which, people. Which is... All you bushwhackers out there, yeah. tune in. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here it is, uh, the, the Manscaped uh, package. Yeah, I've got it here, look. There it is, yeah. The weed whacker on top. The weed whacker for the old, for the old beak. The old beak. I've got the bent one for mine. <laughs> So it goes in yeah. there. Right, what you got in Ralph's there? Ralph's got like a hedge trimmer for his. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do it for him for here. No, I've got those those rods that they used to clean sewers. Mine's like, like a fibre optic. It's cable. like a dino rod for his nostril. Get around the bend. So here we are. We've got the, the Manscaped lawnmower 4.0. Give it a little. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. 4.0, oh, this one. There you go. Yeah. It's got a light on it in case you're shaving your balls in the dark. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Dickhead, don't <laughs> fuck about. Tried to shave my head. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Yeah. So we got this is the older, uh, well, the trimmer. Yeah. Well, so you've got you've got crop reviver in there, which is the uh, spray on toner for your balls. Yeah, I've got the spray toner here. In case yeah. you need some to ball toner. Yeah. You've so got crop after you've shaved it, so it smells nice. Then there's the no, that's the that's preserver. That's the anti chafing. Oh, I don't deodorant. know. I get confused. There's loads of balls in here. Do you tone your balls or moisturise your balls or both? I just give them a bit of a slap. <laughs> <laughs> just get a bit. Of, just wake them up a bit so they get a bit of a swing on, and sure. then I spray them. Make sure, sure every area gets covered. Well, if uh, if it's you know if you want to uh, treat yourself or your other half, then you know you you can you can. Trim them up with the lawnmower, and then you've got the toner, and then you've got the preserver. So that's uh, the crop reviver for toner for your balls, and the preserver to, to deodorize them. You got a dock. You've got a little dock there. There you go. Plugs in. It's all good. Um, now, look, the thing is, uh, we're supporting Manscaped because it is uh, the start of Testicular Cancer Awareness Month in April. Yeah. Um, and uh, Manscaped has partnered with Testicular Cancer, uh, the Testicular Cancer Society, to bring awareness to testicular cancer, men's health, and early cancer detection. Um, so that's a fantastic cause. And it's a, yeah, well, I thought the best way to do it is to show you uh, on this dog. I'm going to try, I'm going to just show you how good this is. I'm going to trim up the dog's balls. Uh, just because, so if you, if you want to check for your own testicular cancer, you've got hairy knackers. This, this, this dog here, I'm just going to give it wait, a little treat. Wait, 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 wait. Well, Come on. well, if we're going to do this, let's do it properly. I'm not shaving your balls. <laughs> I didn't mean. What, that. what are you doing? All right. Okay. So you get you get in there and you make sure you be careful of. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful of the gooch, because that can bleed. I've done some weird stuff. <laughs> you love a dog as well. This is what you do. I bet you do this at home with your dogs. Oh, yeah. No, I just meant this weird because it's a stuffed dog. <laughs> there we go. So we just have to just clear an area. <laughs> Be careful. You're in the gooch. Being be careful. <laughs> I can't see the balls yet, this but we'll ridiculous. get there. Ridiculous. So, so just to show you, it's nice on, on, on the area, yeah. and it's well, nice and well, soft. Well, it's actually... Here we go, look at this. Look at look, see? Hey. So it takes off, it takes off, but 
without any pain, you see. He didn't hear no yelping from the dog. So it's pain free, this. Um, and then it's good for you. And Wait then you bit of ball toner on. <laughs> Get a bit of deodorant on there, mate. What is this one? It's the deodorant. Well, it's not, it's a cream. Bit of, bit of cream on there. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just rub that cream in. And it's not only for smelling, it just helps soothe any areas that might be a bit raw. And it smells nice. Mm. So, <laughs> Manscaped, <laughs> Manscaped has opened the door oh. to anyone who has hairy balls, but also a testicular cancer week. Make sure you check your nuts. Always good to check your nuts, Ben. Always right? have a feel. Have make, a feel, make sure have a checked. little rub around. Jokes aside. Yeah, jokes very, aside. Very, very important. When you have abnormalities, go and see your doctor, mate. Oh, talking helps. Make sure you go and tell people if you've got a bit of a lump on your balls. I mean that. Anyway, yeah, Manscaped, you've done it again. Manscaped. It's the dog's bollocks. <laughs> uh, and of course, because it's in conjunction with us, uh, if, you, uh, if you want some of this fantastic stuff, then you can uh, get a discount, a 20% discount with us if you use the code 2pints20, T-W-O-P-I-N-T-S, uh, two zero, and you'll get 20% off and free shipping. Now, this podcast is being sponsored by NordVPN. Will, do you know what a VPN is? Nope. Do you know what a Nord is? <laughs> VPN <laughs> something to do with your, your visible pants? No. Right. It's a virtual private network, uh, which uh, means that if you're travelling or you're abroad, you can uh, use a VPN so it, it hides uh, the, your geolocation where you are. So it means that you can access content from... With NordVPN, you can access content, content from 59 different countries by changing your virtual location. It also means if you're in, like, an airport or somewhere with public Wi-Fi, it's very difficult for people to hack you. So it's about safety as well. Oh, great. It's a very, very, very cool thing to have. Sweet. And NordVPN is the fastest VPN in the world because one of the problems with the VPN is it can slow down your device or your computer or whatever, but Nord is, is the fastest around. So it's, it's a very, very good product. So grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash pints or use the code pints to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus one additional month for free plus a bonus gift. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. <laughs> So, um, okay, here we are. Second pint. Two pints we were off. Ricky's, on, Ricky's only had a quarter. Thank you very much. Pint number two, here two we go. Pints. No crisp yet. No, no, no they're crisp coming. Just yet. Uh, yeah, so, so, yeah, for people who, who watch boxing just when there's a big fighter and don't follow it and don't know what goes into it, just talk us through. If you're, you're in training for a world title fight, Mayweather, Pacquiao, or any of your big fights, your Rango, or Castillo, any fight like that, you train. F how long is your camp, and what yeah. would your what would you have to do physically to get yourself in shape for that fight? Well, every what time, is your routine? Well, every time I um, used to fight, I used to get myself a mountain climb, and I used to get myself. I used to have about three stone to lose in, in weight over the twelve week period. You lose three stone in twelve. Twelve weeks. weeks. Yeah. Three stone. You wouldn't think to yourself, "I'll just get rid of one stone in advance of the twelve weeks." Well, what I used to do for the first two or three weeks, because I was thirteen stone heavy, I go in the gym. And, Billy, can I, Billy, can I do the pads? And he go, "You're not going anywhere near me with them." <laughs> it's in my pads, you fat bastard. Why you're thirteen stone? <laughs> yeah, and, the, and I used to go on the running machine. I used to go on the stepping machine, the cycling machine, and just do loads of cardio. Just, just you know, for the first two weeks every day, and I went so extreme on my diet, practically. Next to nothing. Really? What was your diet? Just, just in order, just, just, I'd get up in the morning, I'd probably have, you know, probably have a protein shake, do you know what I mean? And then I'd probably have, uh, do me training in the afternoon, I'd have a re recovery shake, which is another one. So you, you get the calories in, but because it's a shake. So you're just having two shakes a day? Off quicker. Mm. And then I'd have something like soup of an evening, do you know, do you know what I mean? Wow. Starving. Uh, yeah, yeah, just just a soup of an evening. I mean, were you starving or were you just like, oh, well, this is what it is? No, just, this, this you just get on with it. I was starving, but I just used to do it. But I used to do that and um, I used to do it because on the first fortnight, I used to do that. So I do like, I do like stolen five pounds in for a week. Would you do morning runs as well? I do, no, I probably, I do, I do, I used to run of an evening actually. Right. But I get up, go to the gym, do my training, have a bit of, you know, shakes and a bit of soup and a bit of something like that. Do me run of an evening, go to bed, and I do that every day, Monday, Monday to Sunday. And I did that for the first two weeks. And in the first two weeks, I'd lose, lose over 
I do the stone, do you know what I mean? Wow. wow. And then I do another one, then I do the same for the next week, and I do maybe another half a stone. And then that's when, after three weeks, say like nine weeks in the training camp, then be, I start jumping the bar, if you saw the apparatus. In the yeah, bar bag, bag used bag to kill me, the bar bag, it's horrible. I start doing that. I start doing the body belt with Billy Graham. I wouldn't quite start sparring just then, but the point I'm making is my training would start to intensify a little bit. Right. I start off on the four rounds, you know, and eventually you go six, eight, and you, you build up from there. But what it is, because I as brought the camels back, as they say, you know, to get you know get a stone and a half off in them first three weeks. So when I started to spar, I started to jump the bar, do the body tilt, I, I, I was able to eat proper then. Right, right. I'd already... I'd already yeah. You know, brought the camels back because I wasn't I wasn't training hard. I was I was training often, but wasn't training hard for the first three weeks. So I didn't right. need the, the the food intake the right. Right. in order to do it. So that's what I wow. that's what I used to do. But I mean, it's yeah, I, I used to have to weigh my food. Yeah, do you Jesus. Know what I mean? But Kerry would say, you know, so much this is chicken, so much of that of rice, so much of that green veg. Then I'd have a shake, and then you train there. Yeah, you do yeah. That. And that's how I mean. So it's like I was. I was dedicated because to be able to, to drop the free stone in a 12 week training camp Unbelievable. and remain to have the, the engine because we always had a good engine My great engine good punch volume you know what I mean good work rate didn't stop and I, you, know, you know and to do that after shedding that that's how dedicated I was because yeah. I, I couldn't cut any corners I just wish if I could turn the clock back it's one thing I could turn the clock back I don't and I, just an happy medium yeah do you know what I mean? yeah. you know you don't have to be these who train seven days a week don't do this don't do that goes to church every you know after yeah. 12 and every Sunday you know what I mean yeah you know but, but my, dad, my dad used to play with me just 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 t- just balance it just balance it a little bit yeah I never, yeah. I never could yeah <laughs> is it too after you eat and you used to have a full English breakfast I used to have a full English breakfast yeah <laughs> before every um after you done the weigh-in? Yeah, after the weigh-in, the next morning, morning of five, full English breakfast. Really? Then, uh, really? That's amazing. <laughs> I was WBU champion. I was WBU world champion, and then I just started working with Kerry Case. So Kerry Case said to me, he said, so Ricky, what do you, uh, what would you normally have, you know, you know, the day of the weigh-in, you know, the, um, the day of the fight, what would you normally have? I said, I bought the putty box and I didn't have a full English breakfast. <laughs> and he went, <laughs> how about what? Hello. Are you taking me? You went, you're a world champion. You have a full English. I went, I went, no, 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 not full English. A mega breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so and it, it worked all right for me, the full English. But then, and then as I got home, but Kerry was like, he said, I used to do cartwheels. He said, I used to go home and say to me, Mrs. Chan, you'll never guess what he has for a day of the time. That fucking idiot. That is amazing. But, um, and that's the thing is in sport now, in whatever, in the sport, in just in everyone, we're all trying to be a bit healthier, aren't we, as we get up better yeah. than that. I mean, and in boxing now, it's, it's you know, you need to know about boxing, you need to know about making weight, you need to know about, yeah. you know, your tactics, speed, body punching, you know, combination punching, the whole lot. But the one thing now, if you need to know about nutrition, yeah. you need to know about diet, you need to know about strength work, you know what I mean? I'm right in thinking when you used to punch, you used to go, ah! I do that like yeah, the yeah, yeah. sound. Did you always do that when you from when you oh, were a kid? That, that just seemed to help me when we breathing. Yeah. I mean, let's say it right if you want. Yeah. When you was an amateur, it's like tennis players. Some tennis players are like, yeah, <clears throat> and then you've got Roger Federer who's like. My amateur, my amateur <laughs> coach used to say it, it's it's it sets out a signal to the judges. He's got this. Some used to go this. Oh, yeah, everyone's different. And yeah. I found that I could uh, it help me help me breathing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just you know, everyone's different. You know. You know, somebody, some of the lads in the gym pad goes, <laughs> I think, it's, it's like, remember the old Batman film? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The old Batman film. Yeah. yeah. Oh. 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 Pow, wham, wham, shabang. Oh, that sounds like he's trying to, trying to blow a candle out. Yeah. There's <laughs> much difference, you know, everywhere you go, da 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 it sounds like a fucking machine. <laughs> everyone, everyone's different, and it's, you know, it's what you feel most comfortable yeah. with, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You know what you were talking about, so your favourite pictures before, we were walking around, you got pictures yeah. of everybody, and you said you, you had Angelina Jolie come into your dressing room, Brad Pitt. So she put you off before you put went you <laughs> She was a double agent. You had a right. on oh, oh, mate, I can't fight now. I had to move around the room with that boxing protector all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, met, you, you met some amazing people. I mean, I know you, you were saying you, 
I mean, if all the pictures up in here are just unbelievable. You're saying that's your favourite. Liam, Liam, Liam Gallagher. Liam yeah. and Noel. Like, talk as well. No, it's like ever since I was um, a young boy, all I ever wanted to be was a world champion, support Man City, and listen to Oasis. And I, I was mates with uh, Noel and Liam, you know, met him on a few occasions, been mates with him for a while. I was asking him for, for everyone a day, we come and carry the belts and we carry the belts in, but. Obviously, they're busy fellas, aren't they? You know what I mean? They have a gig, you know, they've got something on, so they, they were ne never got the chance. Or fighting each other. <laughs> yeah. Never got the chance to carry it in, but they got the chance for the Malinardi fight so far. So, absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Can't wait. So, when the change room is warming up, and I'm, I'm, I've got thinking, they're trying to think of a game plan, you know, keep my nerves together, but I've also got one eye on the, on the changing room door because I'm walking out in 15 minutes, and these two fucking idiots haven't. <laughs> oh fuck me <laughs> now! Minute, you know the change of the door flies open. Nolan and Liam come in. You know what I mean? You're like, hey man, you're all right. The piss man. Like, it's not the You're all right, me. So <laughs> I give uh, I give Noel the I give Noel the ring magazine belt. Liam the IBO belt. So Liam says to me, yeah. Which belt's better? Man, what, the, what, what the fuck do I do with this? Like, <laughs> I went, well, you get in the ring and hold it up in front of Man and Archie. He went, all right, nice one, sweet. We knew who it was though. <laughs> so I got in the ring. I got in the ring like that. No gets in the ring. Liam gets in the ring. Comes straight past me. Straight past No. Goes straight up to Malinaji in his face with the belt. He goes, "What do you think about that? Then you fucking balance." <laughs> 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 I, was, I was like, I was like, <laughs> what are you doing? I've got to ask him now. <laughs> man, had you the New Yorker, yeah. of Italian yeah. descent. Yeah, yeah. So I put Arthur Sopranos with that fucking ringside. He's <laughs> fucking dead. No. <laughs> Oh, it was. Uh, so Liam's nearly got you killed, yeah. basically. Yeah, it, was like... it was. It was brilliant. I've had uh, so many great laughs from him over, over the. Uh, over the You've got this guitar here. Yeah, what's well. this? What's yeah. this about? Can I pick it up? Well, it you know, it's, just, yeah, it's a shame, you know, that they, 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 they split up, didn't they? You know what I mean? Because, I mean, the. Uh, What's the story behind? Bring this? it on, geezer, yeah. Liam Gallagher. Look at that. Yeah. See that? Yeah. yeah. Slap them yanks, our kid. <laughs> <laughs> Manny. Oh, was that Manny? Yeah, Manny's Manny. Like that. You know, Class. Right? But it's a funny story. I mean, the, 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 it's a shame that they fell out, but um, they were always they, they were always falling out, even when they were together, <laughs> yeah. and even at the fucking best. Yeah. You know, to be honest with you, but I got this sitting guitar, and um, Manny signed it for me, and I got. Um, I got Noel to sign it for me there, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. To the champ, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Noel Gallagher, and he signed it on there. So I sent it to Liam, and he had it, for, he must have had it for about fucking 14 months. <laughs> and I went, sign it for me, I want to get it in a, I want to get it in a, in a trophy yeah. cabinet, like, like that, you know, put up. I went, where is he? He went, no, I'm not signing it. I'm not signing it. I'm not signing it on the same side as that prick. Oh, no. Oh, I'm not sorry, signing it on no. the same side as him. I went, come on, will you, mate? It's me. It's me pride and joyous. I've just got to get a new house. I've got a game room going in. I want the guitar on there. Will you oh, sign yeah. it? And he sent it me on the post. And he, said, he signed it, but he signed the back the ticket. <laughs> so you can't put it in a case. <laughs> so I can't, I can't put it in a case. So I guess that's why it's got to. That's why it's got to go on the stand. That is amazing. You wouldn't sign the same side. No. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Bring it on down, geezer. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> what did Noel say? Hold on. What a great story. Peace, love, and shit shirts. Oh, shit shirt yeah, party. Shit shirt, yeah. Noel He's Gallagher. Shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After every, every time we fought, you used to have a party, a celebration. Everyone, we have to, we have to wear the shit shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to find a Brilliant. shitty shirt. Yeah. We used to do that at school. We had shit yeah, shirt day for charity. Red carpet. No. <laughs> shit shirt day. Shit shirt day at Attersley. It was great, this shit that shirt party. Class. Fucking, I remember yeah. them. It was Pats and it was, it was just, just good days, to be honest with you. I mean, my, uh, my mum and dad, it was in the same pub my mum and dad used to have years ago. And the, the same people who went getting the coach and the minibus up to watch me when I was an amateur when I was 11, 12 years of age, the same people yeah. were coming the shit shirt days after we worked Brilliant. Brilliant. against Cross the Zoo, the Brilliant. same people. And that's, uh, that's what it's to me. Because we talk about Mayweather before, don't you? That is, they are arguably the greatest. I mean, the greatest, the greatest will always be Muhammad Ali, but the greatest actual boxer 
you've got to say, you know, Sugar Ray Robinson's there, but you've got to say Mayweather, arguably, probably the, probably the, the best. And he's gone through the weight division. I'm technical, yeah. I'm a firm, firm believer that, you know, but what's the point? I mean, I don't know him personally, but what's the point of being the best if everyone thinks you're a dick? Uh, I mean, that, I, 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 <laughs> kind of, kind of. But I was, I was, I was the best for a short period in my weight division. And, you know, and even though I did get beat by the best, but, you know, I think people look at Ricky out and they probably say, yeah, he, he nearly lost a couple, didn't quite get there, but what a fucking good lad. And, I know who I'd rather be sitting talking you know, to. Yeah, exactly. And what I, what I, before we sort of wrap up, I, we have to talk about Campbell because fucking hell, your son's in the ring now. And, you know, I, I mean, when I, Fucking talk about Campbell. I don't know where the years have gone because he was a little kid, and now I watch him fighting. He's professional. How was that? You sit, what's hard are you sitting ring or being in the ring watching? No, his... it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> Is watching, it watching watching Campbell? But um, you know, I worked so hard my whole, my whole career for the family, and I'm, I'm for Campbell, and I'm for so he didn't have to do something like this. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, um, I still set the same standards in him that you know listen you know you don't think you're gonna just put your hand out and you yeah know, whatever you ask for you you're gonna get you know but mm. i mean i didn't want him to most certainly didn't want him to box but i think he's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders and a lot of you know a lot to, to live up to but i think instead of people i think they, i think he deserves a pat on the back say listen look what your dad did and you still want to go and give him yeah it's a lot of pressure he's got a he's actually said you didn't you still want him to box no, I don't, well, no why, I, why I, didn't, I didn't want to. Box, why is that? No. Why? I just, I just, just know how hard the game it is. You know what I mean? I, I just, I did it so, um, so he didn't have to box, and he, he probably didn't have to put. He probably didn't have to box. Still, like standard wise, I want him to, you know, to, you know, <coughs> you know, and for me, for me daughter, don't think you're going to be able to sit on your ass and just say, mm. "Daddy, Daddy, I want, I want, I want," and you're going to, going to get. You know, mm. but, you know, the, my kids have been brought up to learn that. You know. You only get out what you work for in, in, yeah. in this life. But I'll be honest, I didn't want him to. I didn't want him to box. And why would you want to see your, see your, your son there get punched? And it's really, really hard work. But I respect my son so much for wanting yeah. to to give it an effort because he didn't have to do it. You know, yeah. and um, it's a it's a long journey for him. It's only in the early early days yet. But I mean, uh, he didn't have a massive amateur career, did he? You know, no, he only had twenty four amateur fights. In fact, very similar to Matthew, who's his um, who's his trainer now. Your brother Matthew. And I say to Campbell, I say, listen, Campbell, I say it's not where you start, it's where you finish. Mm -hmm. Look at Matthew, Matthew, mm -hmm. uh, I think Matthew lost a sixth rounder. He got disqualified in an eight rounder. You know what I mean? He would lost a couple along the way, but he didn't let his head get down. He stayed at it, stayed at it. He won the European title. He defended it. Two, three times I think and then you don't go the distance with Canelo, Canelo Alvarez. Alvarez unbelievable and that's so so Campbell you know yeah, you exactly know, yeah. you just because people are giving you a little bit yeah. of a stick because you've had a little bit of an iffy performance yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah. not just that as well it's going to happen isn't it it's, it's, it's not it's just that it's because because of his name Hatton he's been propelled because nobody after three or four fights will be live on Sky usually but because he's your son it creates media attention he obviously you know he's earned a bit of money well he's not being he left won. alone to just develop well, is he but it adds yeah, more yeah. pressure yeah. so it's you know he's not it's, being left alone to develop but I mean to be honest with you there's no point in moaning about it this social media it's the world we exactly. now and I can say Campbell listen don't read the comments but you know it, you do, you do. Because that's yeah. that's that's the world, that's the era we're in now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you are going to read yeah. it. But I say, Campbell, I said, listen, I said, if I'm not happy with your performance, or Matthew's not happy with your performance, I already heard that's all about performance. Yeah. That's when you need to shoot yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not when people are just giving you giving you shit on Twitter. Say, well, yeah. The same people the following week, well, oh, did you do well tonight, Campbell? And then if you don't do it the next time, yeah. they'll be back on your case. I said, yeah. you know, it's it's very, very hard. But I mean, the, the big, big picture, big scheme of things. He gets support, gets support from the right people. He's getting yeah. the backing. I think genuine boxing fans are genuine people and, and local people. They're all right, right behind him, and uh, he'll give it. How old is he now? How old? Uh, Twenty-one. So he's got he's got ages to go. Yeah, it's a lifetime, and yeah. I mean, I just said, listen, look, look at Matthew. He stayed at it. Look what he did. Anthony Crowley was another example. Exactly. He lost the British title. Hundred percent. Yeah. I promoted Anthony at the time. He lost the sixth round to, to, to Jurdiman. He lost a British title fight to Derry Matthews and then went on 100%. to become the world champion for Lamachenko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, you know, that's what you've that's what you, you've got to do. Conor Ben, 
everyone was saying to Conor Benny had a few weekly performances. He did, another one who did have a big time. amateur career either, did he? No, he didn't know. Unbelievable. He didn't world title. Yeah. Massive yeah. transformation with Conor Benny. Massive transformation. I said, you know, be upset about it and that, but I said, like I said to you earlier, guys, when people start to knock me, I used it as my fuel yeah. in order to do it. I said, that's what you've got to use as your fuel. Um, We've got to wrap this up because you've been really generous with your time. Uh, and we do have a question I'd like to ask to continue us about Campbell, but you made me think of something now. I just want to ask. He, he used to box, right? And he's been, I've never, I've only ever like done a bit of training in the ring and it's the hardest thing I've ever done. I've played every sport, but I've never, trying to shadow box, it, it, I've never known anything as hard, but I've also <laughs> never been hit. Do you remember the first time you got, I remember watching you in, in the Mayweather fight and you took a shot and he was clocked you and you just went, <laughs> I just carried on. I was like, he is the hardest man I've ever seen in my life. Take like, do you remember the first time you got hit? Do you just get used to it? How do you get a better chin? Is it just natural? You just get, you just get used to it. And it's like, you know, if you're worried about getting it or you're thinking about, you know, you're in the totally in the wrong game. It's just <laughs> going to come with it. But I mean, I think I remember the couple of fights when I was coming up. And they, you know, like I said, you've got to get hit in order to, to learn and progress. I fought a guy called Eamon McGee years ago. I remember it. He was a left foot. He was a right, right. It was a left foot yeah, one. He was a south pole, right, right. right. Yeah, put into the ropes. And he, he, he knocked me down and I got up. But it was a, little, it was a fast knockdown. I just wiped my hands and went up and he caught me square up. It was a fucking great but shot. But then I, I put the pressure on him again and then he sat back and he got me with a short left hook and my legs went, did the funny dance there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, man. yeah. And then I fought a guy... Um, called Vince Phillips. I yeah. was knocking 10 bells out of him and I thought, oh, just put the finishing touches this. Mm. And I went in with an attack that was a little bit careless and he went right up and up, bang, and it hit me. And it was like, no, oh, you're <laughs> dipping your foot in the edge of this one, me put the water there. It was like, oh, shit, go. Oh, okay. He tried to finish me off and he couldn't do really. it. And it's just, you just, you just get used to it over the years. Yeah. But, uh, it's all about, like I mentioned earlier, about me put, put my weight on and my lifestyle and that. It's all about looking at your body and that. Because when, you, when you're young, when I fought Kosha Zoo, he'd hit me with that right hand and I, I could go and go up. Mm. And I'd come through it and go through it. But sooner or later, you know, once you get a little bit older, yeah. you don't quite look after yourself. Yeah. It's like chopping a tree, isn't it? You yeah. chop a tree, you know, you're not going to do it with one one foul tree. You've got to do a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what you, your resistance and your body goes through yeah, yeah. if you don't look after yourself properly. So. The Costa Zoo night's got to go down as one of the, one of the best nights ever. Yeah. I mean, I'm not... Your best, uh, best win. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, it was yeah. about midnight, wasn't it? In the, in the two end. in the morning. Two in the morning, yeah. Two in the morning. Manchester Arena, two in the morning. And they had it at two in the morning to coincide <clears> with American TV, mm-hmm. Australian TV, mm-hmm. so they... Can watch it at um, a decent time over there. So the the press said to me, Ricky, you know, you must have had to alter your training you know, to fight at two o'clock in the morning. How do you think you're going to go on fighting at two in the morning? I said, listen, everyone in Manchester fucking fights at two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I've been training for this my whole life. <laughs> oh, fantastic. I, I just think we've got one question to wrap up now. It's a toughie. It's a, it's tough a toughie. Um, it's a would you rather. Would you rather. We love a would you rather on two pints we're going around. Would you rather have beaten Floyd Mayweather or Campbell to win a world title? Campbell to win a world title. Really? That was easier than, yeah. than I thought it would be. Oh, 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 day, all day long. Because, yeah, they love to beat Mayweather, but I mean, he... They're all time great. I believe the greatest of all time. So, you know, could he have beat him? Maybe, maybe not. I think whatever chance I did have, I think they took it away from me, the tossers. 100%. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I'd already I'd already made it before the box, before he made one. Yeah. And I think if I could, you know, if Campbell can... Uh, go on and be a world champion god what a success story. unbelievable what a success story and you know what he's got to have a chance he just needs time a little bit of patience and given the right time he'll get there um, that's the phone saying that this interview's over <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I just think um, man it's just been an absolute pleasure yeah, thank you mate. for those into your house your home your pleasure. family home your absolutely, bar absolutely really enjoyed it, really um, enjoyed it. Yeah. it's like a few of these you know like we mentioned earlier about the mental health and stuff like that yeah. and being down and that a few years ago, when when people mentioned the Mayweather fight, the Pacquiao fight, you know, stuff like that, I, I didn't want to speak about it, I didn't want to hear about it, talk about it, but it's nice now that years gone by, you can sit here and have a talk about the good time. And I look back with it now at Pride. Yeah. And that's how, uh, that's how serious it's been good to... Uh, I, I honestly, good to th- I honestly think it. that people, and I'm saying this from my personal experience, as not even that big a boxing fan. I honestly think that people went through 
whatever emotion you went through. And I think that people, you talk about your fans, I honestly think people lived it with you in a way that yep. doesn't normally happen with sportsmen. I think you captured people's imagination okay. in the most extraordinary way, and that's down to you. Well, it's right, and it's when I, uh, I think, you know, when you know, kids come up to me now, and young lads come up to me now in the pub, or, or just, just walking down the street, go, oh, you got me into boxing. You remember watching yeah. you when I was little? When yeah. I was little, they were about six foot puppy four. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I was little, it yeah. made me feel any older. Also, it happens quick, doesn't it? You go, Jesus, I didn't realise I was that old. They've not seen me live. Yeah. They could only watch, they could only see it on YouTube or something like that, but, but the fact that, He's still watching Ricky Hatton. I, yeah, I just, I, I have to say thank yeah. you as well for me, um, for my dad, who's obviously not with us anymore. The memories yeah. you gave us, great times. Just, yeah. just my dad dreamt to go into Vegas um, to watch boxing, and so did I. And how, what better way than to go with a local lad who we've already followed? Yeah, and we found we went with you, didn't we? We were there with you. Um, the we, Vegas fight, Scott. I mean, the combat fight was ten years ago. The Arango fight was fifteen years ago. A couple of days. That's the first wow. the first Vegas fight. Speaking yeah. Speaking about it now, wow. Is that you know, fifteen years on, we can say yeah. But we dad, we dad, we dad with a sombrero on. Fuck knows where he got it. With the Ricky Hatton flag going, there's the only one <laughs> with no yeah. shirt on. In the of all the lads. And Ricky's going, let's fucking have him. And we're all going mad. And it's just like them memories I've got no. for life. And the thanks Thank to you, 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 yeah. you give us that. Um, and also, me yeah. and you playing in Soccer Aid was eleven years ago. 10, 12 years ago? Yeah, yeah, no. It's Don't feel like 12 years ago. Yo, no. It feels like they really what, recently. Uh, what a great week that was. Yeah. I remember in training, you were banging him in for fun. I was like, oh, Ricky can play. Playing on the five side. <laughs> <laughs> How did you find the pitch at Old Trafford? I probably had the ball at my feet because I could pass it. But whenever I had to run into the space, then I was absolutely knackered. <laughs> <laughs> but no, obviously, you know, we and Ralph played in soccer made right there. And yeah. obviously, you know, I'm, I'm very, very proud of my roots, Manchester. When yeah, exactly. Me too. Family. Was such an iconic yeah. fucking series. Massive. It was unbelievable. So, t- but today's been a walk in the park. So you've just swapped it for one fact, Ricky, for another. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. At least I haven't had to make you any cups of tea. To be fair, <laughs> it's been easy for me. No, man, thank you so much. Oh, what what a legend. Thing. And I think it's only fair that um, uh, the interview's done. But Ralph, as I keep saying, it, he's never really. I had a go at boxing. I think it's only fair that we let him have a little bit of a go. Well, what you do, you know, if you if you win, if you they always Make say sure you tense up a bit. They always say that the hardest punches, you know, the punches that knock you out and the punches that you don't see. Okay. So if I win, if I just win one in there, yeah. you know what I mean? You feel it. So what I used to do, I used to go touch, 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 and then blast them. Mm-hmm.